Zeros of polynomials, part three. So we're going to look at three more problems uh, and find the zeros. They tell us to find all the zeros of the polynomial function, use the rational zero theorem, so we'll find the possible rational zeros. They say to use Descartes' rule of signs. We're going to leave that out. Honestly, the graphing calculator is used so much now. And Descartes' rule of signs just tells you about possible zeros. It doesn't tell you this is a zero or this is a zero. It tells you what some zeros could be. I think it really it's obsolete for this purpose. Uh, so we're going to leave it out. And you might think, well, why are we doing anything besides a graphing calculator? And you will see on one of these problems that if all you had is a graphing calculator, you would be stuck. Uh, so it is important to be able to do uh, them by hand. But we will use the graphing calculator uh, in conjunction with that. All right, so we want to find the zeros for this problem. And this is one you might try and see if it would factor. Uh, it actually doesn't factor. Um, it is four terms. You could try grouping, but it doesn't work. Uh, let's list our possible rational zeros. That is going to be plus or minus factors of the constant term. So 1, 2, 4, and 8 over factors of the leading coefficient. And again, that's 1, so that's nice. We don't have to have it. So plus or minus 1, 2, 4, and 8. Uh, we will go to the calculator next and pick off one of those zeros. I have typed the function in already and so we'll go ahead and say graph and we can see three zeros and this looks like it's at an integer they actually all look like they're at integers so a negative two so we're going to double check so second calc value and we're going to try negative two that one works. Second calc value and I would try one. That one works. And two, three looks like four. Um, second calc value four. And that one works. So those are our zeros from the calculator. We'll go ahead and just use one of them and use the synthetic division uh, just to make sure we get the same answers. So if we use one, we'll do synthetic division with it. And so we have one, negative three, negative six, and eight. Skip a row. Come down. One times one is one. So this is negative two times 1 is negative 2. This gives us negative 8 times 1 is negative 8 and this is 0. We're going to drop one degree lower so x cubed to x squared. So we have x squared minus 2x minus 8. Set that equal to 0 to solve. This one looks like it will factor. So we could do uh, plus and minus different signs and how about 4 and 2 and always double check, but it works. So x equals negative 2 and x equals 4. And those were the other zeros we found. So the calculator actually gave us all of them this time. Right, our next problem. Um, we will do possible rational zeros. So plus and minus. And it's going to be factors of the constant. So 1, 2, 4, and 8 over your leading coefficient, factors of it, which is 1. And so we don't have to write that. We're good there. Um, we will go ahead and pull up the calculator to get a 1, 0. I have typed the function in just to save us a little time. x cubed minus 8x minus 8. Now we'll say graph. All right, and it looks like here we have a couple of zeros and one over here. 
Um, I think that maybe this one is on, to, on an integer, um, and that would be negative 2, and that is a possibility. So let's test it. So second count value negative 2. Right, so that one works. Um, the next one, I don't think one works. We can try it. Actually, it would be negative one. And it's just a tiny bit below. So uh, it is not negative one. It's going to be a fraction. So this means it's going to be an irrational root because we didn't have any fractions here. So it's going to be one of those with the radical. Um, and this one is not on quite on the 3 either. So it looks like we'll get two irrational roots there. And we'll go ahead and use the negative 2. So we'll do synthetic division with the negative 2. You have to be a little careful when you set this one up because you're missing a term. So you have 1 for x cubed. You don't have an x squared, so make sure you put a 0 in. All right, skip a row. So 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. This is still negative 2. This is positive 4, negative 4, and positive 8. And there is our 0 remainder. So we drop 1 degree lower. Now it is 1x squared minus 2x minus 4. And we'll set that equal to 0. Unfortunately, this doesn't factor 4 and 1 or 2 and 2, so we will have to go to the quadratic formula. So we'll go ahead and plug in. Our b was already negative, so the opposite of that would be positive. And we're going to have negative 2 squared minus 4 times a times c. all over 2 times 1. And I'll go back this way just a little bit. So I have 2 plus or minus. This is 4. And you have two negatives here, so that's going to be a positive 16 over 2. This is 2 plus or minus a square root of 20 over 2. We have simplified the square root of 20 a couple of times. It's 4 times 5, and 4 is a perfect square. So this will give us 2 plus or minus um, 2 times the square root of 5 over 2. And you have a common factor of 2 in this little uh, triangle around your plus and minus. So all those 2s are going to divide out. This gives us 1 plus or minus, and you don't have to write that, uh, 1, square root of 5. Um, don't forget we also had negative 2 for our 0, so our zeros are negative 2 and 1 plus or minus square root of 5. So it depends on what my math lab asks you for. If you have done this by hand and you get 1 plus or minus the square root of 5, you can actually just plug that into the calculator. It would be the same as doing the graph. So if we do 1 plus square root of 5, enter, and so we have 3 point 2360, which we would round uh, to three places, the zero would drop off. And then if we do 1 minus the square root of 5, We get negative 
1.2360 and to three places uh, this zero would drop off so just depending on which form they ask you for and that's another way to pull it out of your calculator if we looked for those points on there it would be the same thing we have one more problem to look at and this one has some interesting things happen in it so let's go ahead and start and so first our possible rational zeros are plus or minus one two uh, 13 and 26 that would be over factors of the leading coefficient which is 1 so those would all be over 1 uh, let's go ahead and pull it up on our calculator so I have entered that for you x to the fourth plus 23x squared plus 50x plus 26 and we will tell it graph Hmm. So it didn't cross through the axis any time, and it came down to touch it just one time. So if you remember back to when we talked about zeros and multiplicity of zeros, um, if it touches and turns around, that factor occurs two times. That is called a double root. So one of these roots will occur two times in the factorization. Uh, it looks like negative 1, which is a possibility. So let's check that. So second calc value, negative 1, and that works. So that is a double root. So x plus 1 is a factor two times in this um, function. Right. Also, we notice that it didn't cross through any other times. Right. We should get four zeros. Well, this would count for two. But what about the other zeros? If they're complex zeros, they're not going to show up on this graph. So this is a clue that those zeros are complex. And so we would have to do it by hand. All right. So we'll set up to do our synthetic division, and since this is a double root, we're going to use it two times. Um, so we'll start off negative 1. So we have 1. You're missing x to the third, so be sure to put a 0. 23, 50, 26. All right, skip a row. So 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. That's a negative 1. That gives us a positive 1, and this is a 24. Times negative 1 is negative 24. This gives us 26, and a negative 26, which gives us a 0. Now, since this is a double root, we will use the negative 1 again, but we're going into this line. You don't go back into the original. That's how you're getting it to go down. This is down to x cubed. We want it to go one more time. So we'll use the negative 1 again. So um, 1 times negative 1 gives negative 1. This is negative 2. Positive 2 is 26. Multiplying that gives negative 26. And this is 0. That's as far as we go on this one. So now this was x to the third. This will be x squared. So we have x squared minus 2x plus 26 equals 0. And then we'll go to quadratic formula. So we're ready to plug in. Our b is already negative, so the opposite of b will give us a positive 2 plus or minus All right, a negative 2 squared minus 4 times our a times our c all over 2 times our a. All right, this gives us 2 plus or minus the square root of 4. Uh, this is negative or minus, and this is 104 
over 2. And this is going to be a negative under your radical, so that confirms our uh, complex roots. And so we'll go up this way. Uh, we have 2 plus or minus square root of negative 100 over 2. Uh, this will give us 10i. So 2 plus or minus 10i over 2. And you have a factor of 2 you can divide out. So we get 1 plus or minus 5i. All right, that's two of our roots. They are um, conjugates, so complex conjugates. And then negative 1 is our other root.